<clears throat> hey guys, Fox here with my third raw vlog installment. I think I'll call it that. Sounds pretty epic, don't you think? So I got a couple things in mind that I wanted to share about. And I think the first thing is uh, school textbooks are ridiculous. Um, normally I'd be getting financial aid and the cost of textbooks wouldn't be a problem but uh, for the summer I wasn't able to get any aid so that stink um, just didn't do so hot and I need certain amount of credits to keep getting aid so thankfully with the help of these classes that I'm taking for the summer that'll build back up my credit and GPA and and then I'll be able to get it for the fall so uh, but anyways I had to go see how much a book cost for a class and it was just kinda ridiculous and I'm just trying to figure out if that was if it was worth a hundred dollars not saying I couldn't afford it but just saying if it's worth it or not so that's the big question right now uh, somebody in my class said they got it for thirty dollars but the weird thing is that this book is customly for my school so for them to get it thirty dollars somewhere else was a is a bit hard to believe because I haven't been able to find it at all online. So I'm gonna have to wait till Monday to see if that's even true. Because even another guy in my class was like, they were expecting a hundred dollars. And yeah, they are. <laughs> so Yeah, frustrating, but I think it'll be okay somehow. We'll see. Um, second thing, so what are you guys' opinion about, like, truth and relativity to each other? Like, if we were debating... Okay, so I'm a Christian, and even though I'm not going to judge people, I just don't agree with things that people choose to do. And I'm going to speak up if uh, the gospel is used to defend people's actions that go against the gospel. And if we were to debate why we can't just settle with, you know, uh, it would create more peace if people were to just come to a ag mutual agreement and, yeah. But that would contradict the gospel too because then I would be compromising with saying um, I'm okay with your truth and I'm also okay with my truth and so we're gonna attempt to tell both truths to everybody so that there's peace um, C.S. Lewis makes an argument that what's true for you and what's true for me cannot be relative because if it was relative it would be universal and the gospel is not universal truth for everyone so that's why that's hard uh, but my goal is to share the gospel and uh, through my life through my actions through my words through the way I treat people. 
sometimes I fail, sometimes I don't. I'm human just as the next person. The only difference is I believe that I'm being empowered by God's Spirit to do those things and act that way and love that way. Um, but it's it's hard to explain that to people because you don't want to get all Christianese and people are like, what does that even mean? And you want to try to relate with people. And it's just like, you know, blah, blah, blah to the next person that doesn't know Jesus. They only know bits and pieces of the Bible. Maybe they grew up in church. Maybe um, a pastor told them something. So the idea of loving your neighbor as yourself is not loving yourself just to settle and be okay. So the way God loves us loves us is that when he loves us, we change. And I know it's hard to say, why would I want to change? Because I'm content with myself. But then the problem is when we need to defend our cases with using God loves everyone, therefore it should be okay. If you think what you believe is true, but I think what you do is wrong, that doesn't automatically mean that I'm judging you or uh, making you an outcast. Just I don't agree with your choices. And I sin too. I do things that I don't want to do. Um, and I try, it's not even that I try, it's that I want to do better. Um, but I'm not condemned by not doing better. I'm actually empowered by the grace and love to keep moving forward and keep pursuing Jesus and keep... Um, being the person he's called me to be. And if I'm not doing that, and if I'm defending the gospel, but I'm not living it, then I'm lukewarm just as the next person who is labeled a Christian or... And they don't show you at all. Um, like... We have food pantry at our church, and if you go and help out, that's good, and it helps other people, but it doesn't make you any less or any more good than the next person, because, like, I don't know, it's, it's like charity work. Like, people that don't believe in Jesus do charity work. And, um, I don't know. It's just not defined by what you do, per se. Like, what you do matters. It's just not defined by that. If you don't go to church, if you don't read the Bible, but you know you are saved by Jesus because of how your life is compared to what it used to be that that in itself is powerful because it's the salvation of God that saves people or the power of God that saves people not church not his word but God himself because people that don't have a Bible, that don't have church, that don't have the, the ability to help out other people, they themselves will be condemned if 
God's power is not alone good enough, and we need to do this and this. No, it's just God himself that saves us. And people can be changed by his spirit without the Bible, without church. Now, those are tools that we use when we follow Christ to um, be in community with another and to know what he says and read his word. And by reading his word, we are equipped with being able to do the works he wants us to do and having the knowledge and the wisdom to share with other people the gospel and what his word says so those those are tools that god given us to excel in with him with spreading the good news but as originally I was trying to say is that it's hard for us to debate or it's hard for us to come to a conclusion that peace should reign because none of us agree with each other. Um, and that we should continue to, you know, uh, coexist but like I said that contradicts the gospel just because of what Jesus said like it's me or it's nothing and people are offended by that concept a lot of people ask me why is it gonna be God or hell you know why is not there middle ground? <sighs> it's a super hard question, even for me. I mean, not just me, but like just people in general. I mean, my best answer is that why would you risk going to hell? Right. Following Jesus and being saved and knowing that there is hope and being with him and living forever sounds like a better deal than risking dying alone and being tortured for eternity. I mean, even though even if it sounds fictional I mean, if there's a slight possibility that it churns people's hearts, I mean, come on. <laughs> what sounds better? Um, but that, that in itself is a revelation that God's going to give to people. I'm only able to share with you and tell you what there is. I can't convince you. I'm not going to judge you if you don't accept it. I'm not going to pretend you don't exist if you don't accept it. Um, I just want to agree with choices that you make that go against what God desires. and But I'll love you the same. Because I'm human too, and I make bad choices, but I still got to love myself and know that God loves me, even though I fall. It's just the the concept of how Bruce Wayne's father said it best in Batman Begins. You know, why did we fall, Bruce, so we can pick ourselves back up? And he was loving to Bruce. Like... He didn't condemn Bruce for following the well. Because that would have seemed silly and stupid. Like, you're a dumb kid for following the well. Should have known better. Well, God knows we don't know better. So that's why he picks us up gently and loves us. and say So we can pick ourselves back up. Well, this was an interesting turnout. 
So, uh, hope you enjoyed it. So, yeah.